just a few days ago, you said sanctions against North Korea won't be lifted until, quote, we're confident that we substantially reduced that risk, the risk of a nuclear attack. But that standard, a substantial reduction of risk, it seems different from what you said just last June. Take, take a listen. We're going to get complete denuclearization. Only then will there be relief from the sanctions. So I guess the question is, has the Trump administration changed the conditions for sanction relief from complete denuclearization, as you said in that clip, to substantial reduction of risk? No, Jake, there's no change. Remember, these sanctions cover a broad array of activities. Uh, the core economic sanctions, the sanctions that prevent countries from conducting trade, creating wealth for North Korea, uh, those sanctions uh, are definitely going to remain in place. There are other things we could do, exchanges of people, uh, lots of other ways that North Korea is sanctioned today that if we get a substantial step, a move forward, we could certainly provide uh, uh, an outlet which would demonstrate our commitment to the process as well. So it's kind of a sliding scale, a substantial reduction, some sanctions are relieved, but not all and then complete denuclearization, more sanctions are relieved. Is that right? Jake, remember, the, the core sanctions, the, the core UN Security Council resolution sanctions, we've said consistently, full, verified denuclearization, that's the standard for relieving those sanctions. That policy has not changed since, um, I think, since the day President Trump took office. Take a listen to um, what the President's Director of National Intelligence said just last month about the threat from North Korea. We currently assess that North Korea will seek to retain its WMD capabilities and is unlikely to completely give up its nuclear weapons and production capabilities because its leaders ultimately view nuclear weapons as critical to regime survival. How do you convince Kim to give up something that he thinks is critical to his regime's survival? What is the United States offering that's better than that? And we've made it very plain to Chairman Kim. Uh, the alternative to giving up his nuclear weapons is remaining a pariah state, remaining a nation that is uh, unable to trade, unable to grow, unable to take care of its own people. Uh, we've made the argument that it would be far better, far better for Chairman Kim himself, his senior leadership, all of the people for North Korea. Uh, we've also shared with him that we are happy to make sure that North Korea's security assurances, they're worried about China, uh, that the security assurances that they need uh, can be provided in a way that is reasonable. And we've also told them there'll be, there'll be real opportunities, that countries from around the world will come uh, make his economy one that looks more like South Korea's economy than the one that exists in North Korea today. Those are the kinds of things. Uh, I've had these conversations. I've been with Chairman Kim, I think, more hours now than anybody, including Dennis Rodman. Um, <laughs> uh, we've, we've had these conversations now over an extended period. And uh, uh, what, what Senator Coates, what Director Coates said is the history, and we're hoping to move forward and change that history fundamentally. North Korea wants the United States to end the declaration of war, the, of the Korean War. Is that on the table for the summit? Talked about a lot of things, Jake. I'd just prefer not to get into where the negotiations may stand today.